In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps patch a record variable and some of the troubleshooting steps that led me to need to do this. So this past last week, I had some customer issues come up where the data I was getting back wasn't what I expected. So I'm going to walk you through how I troubleshotted, troubleshooted, troubleshotted that. I don't know. Uh, we're going to use the trim function, the lens function, a couple other things to do that. And then once we figure out that the data is broken, then we're going to go and we're going to patch the variable record. So that way we can have good data to make the rest of my app function. So this is one of those ones where you guys ask me a lot. You like to see me struggle. I'm going to show you the struggle that I had this week. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911, those guys. And today's show was about patching a variable record. So a lot of times we create records in variables, right? We use that throughout our apps to avoid things like gallery.selected and things, those type of issues. And so what I want to do is I'm going to talk to you how to patch that actual record because I didn't know how to do it until this week because I had to go figure it out. So instead of you guys having to figure it out, I'm going to teach you how to do it. But before I show you that, I'm going to show you all of the challenges that got me there. So a lot of times I get dropped into customer projects, in the middle of the project, you know, I don't, had no say on anything. And they're just like, hey, here's some data, make it do some stuff. I can't see the back end data. You know, I, I, get, I get stopped in a lot of weird places. And so what I wanted to show you guys was this week when I encountered this issue with the data, it took me a little bit to figure out what they had done before I even realized I needed to go fix the data variable. So I'm gonna show you guys what happened to me and then how I worked my way through it and figured out, oh, this is what they've done so I can then go and fix it. So hopefully in your environment, you can just go talk to the DBA or the data owner and you don't have to guess your way around, but that's usually not the luxury I get. So I need to go on adventures. So we're gonna walk through that, all right? And to do that, let's just switch over to my desktop and take a look. Okay, so over here on my desktop, I have made some fake data and we'll show you how I made the data, but I don't wanna give away what happens. So I don't wish I want you to see the data. Uh, but so here you can see I had a gallery of customer accounts. And so for all the accounts, I had an account name and then I had the account type. And so in this particular app, there's about 40, 45 screens in the app and over 120 different pieces of logic, a lot of which relied on, you know, if the account type is 60, do this. If the account type is 19, do that, right? There was a lot of that type of stuff throughout the app. And most of the screen had been, or most of the app had been written is what we refer to as we did it blind. So a lot of the logic was written without actually having test data, but just saying, okay, you know, here I need to check to see if it's 60. So from this screen, now that I've got some data, the very first thing I always do, right? So I go here to my gallery, I'm like, all right, before we leave, what am I gonna do? I'm going to set var record to this item. And so the idea here is that I do not want to be dependent on gallery one dot selected throughout my app. If you are, you're just setting yourself up for head scratchers because if the data changes, and now my head itches, I said that, but if the data changes and that gallery gets refreshed th throughout, the gallery dot selected can change, right? So this is why I always just, hey, I'm gonna do this and then navigate to another screen or do whatever. But everywhere in your app that you use gallery dot selected, now you use var record. Same field, same data is available, but you're not dependent on the gallery not getting changed, okay? So this is a pretty common thing, we've covered this before. So I'm gonna hold down my Alt key, we'll press the second one here. And so then now I'm gonna throw, oh, not a label right there though. We're gonna throw a label over here. And then we can be like, all right, var record, and then dot, and then there's the two fields that came through. I want to count type, 73, perfect, okay? So you're like, all right, we're cooking. So in the app, I told you that a lot of their formulas were if, you know, account type was 73, do something. So let's just do something like this. I'm gonna grab an icon. And so maybe the first thing they wanted to do, because there was some of this type of logic in the app, is we wanted to show a big smiley face, right? Because we like account type 73s. I don't know why, but we like those account types. So what you might do here for the smiley face is be like, all right, visible. Now remember, you could write an if statement, but we can also just be say, you know, if account, oh uh, wait, it's var record, you gotta type var record first, var record dot account type, and then you do equals 73, you'd be like, all right, sweet. Now you immediately see the blue line, you're like, oh, what is that? So I hover, incompatible type. Mm, I bet I know what this is. 
So if I highlight account type, remember, then this is one of those things that's important, right? These are troubleshooting skills that apply everywhere. So I want you to reinforce these with you. So var record dot account type, it's telling me, hey, that's text. So even though it's a number and all of their account types are numbers, they store them as text. I didn't know that, all right? And the problem is, is that this side's text and this side, you know, is a number. So I'm like, all right, well, simple fix, right? So that's 73 the number, that is 73 the text. Cool. Now, wait a minute. Why isn't my smiley face showing up, right? Clearly, that is 73. And clearly, oh, that's where my icon, that is a 73. So if I highlight this, why is that false? And this, this is where the madness started to happen, right? I was four hours into this thing, and all of a sudden I'm like, why in the world doesn't this data match when it's clearly both of them are 73? So I got angry. I did my first troubleshooting step, which is reboot power apps, right? That's where I go over here and I say, you know, I save my app off. I close it, open it back up. Like, surely that'll fix it. Still didn't show up. So after a little bit of head scratch, I'm like, All right, calm down. What could it be? So first thing I did, because I love my labels, I threw a label on here. I'm like, hey, what is the length, right? So there's a function called len that returns the number of characters in a text string. So what is the len of var record? dot account type. Well, it should be two, right? It's three. What? So I'm like, well, that's that's real weird. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go over here to my gallery for a second. So we'll leave the 60 right there. I'm gonna throw a gallery in my label, or a label in my gallery, and then we're just gonna do lin, and I keep wanting to type length, but it's lin. It's lin account type. And so then that shows me, oh, well, son of a gun. Look at that. They're all different. One is six, one is three, that one is three, that is three. So somewhere along the way in their account type stuff, they're like, they're clearly adding extra spaces. But what's really frustrating to me is that if you highlight this, right, you can't see it. Or if you highlight this and you put the little drop down, you don't see them, right? That's the problem with spaces. So. The next thing I want to do is I want to understand whether they're on the front or the back. So what I did was I used the left function. So give me left of that particular uh, item and give me the left two characters. Mm. So that what they're doing is they're appending a bunch of spaces. I, and, and I don't know how they're doing it. I tried to recreate this problem in some of my SQL test datas and I could not get SQL to send SharePoint or Power Apps padded data, but that's a me problem. Either way, they've got some secret spaces. So then now you're like, all right, well, how do I get that fixed? So what we're gonna do is there's a function called trim. And so the trim function will remove all the blank spaces from both the front and the back. So now if I go to the up here, I'm like, hey, what is the len of this after I trim it? It is two. Oh. And if we go back over here and we're like, all right, so let's try that over here just to make sure that this works across the board. All right, two, two, that one's three, yep, two, three. Okay, so we understand now that um, trim can get us the better data. The problem was though, is I had this variable used, I had var record dot account type used in, I don't know, I would say almost a hundred if statements throughout the app, right? Because once again, we wrote the app blind, so we're like encountering this kind of after the fact for troubleshooting why the app doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So, what do you do? Well, I could go back over here to the gallery and I could just, you know, do the trimming over here and then that would return it. But that's, that's not ideal because in reality, you know, in their scenario, I wasn't really pulling it out of the gallery. I was using the gallery to go fetch some data. It wasn't gonna work. What I really needed to do was I needed to patch var record. So I needed to set it, and then I needed to patch it and patch it correctly. I'm like, all right, well, I do a lot of patching. I love patching. Let's talk about how that would work. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna try this. And I've never done this before, so I was kind of learning. All right, all right. so patch, no, not patch that. I wanna patch var record, all right? And I want to, we know when we patch a record, we kind of do this. So yeah, there you go. It's just suggesting it, account type. And I'm gonna set account type to be trim you know what i'm gonna make this easy on myself i'm gonna hard code it first because i'm not going to try and get that trim to work right away so i'm just gonna be like all right view 
and then set you to 60. Oh, I close my curly brackets and do that. So that, you know, power apps isn't mad. All right, I'm excited. So we're going to, um, let's see, we'll go right here. So we'll get rid of the trim, we'll just do len. So then that way we'll be able to see that it should change from three to two. Press the button, it's still three. Oh, but if we look at it, it's still 73 even. It's, it's, so it's the wrong data, um, but, but there's no error, okay? So I then had to like get out my abacus and do a lot of figuring. And then I needed to understand something that I didn't know before, and that's what I'm here to teach you, is that patch, when you give it two records like this, what it does is it takes this record, right? And if, if you think about it, var record is really just account type colon 60 with the spaces, and then account uh, name is Chewy IRA, right? That's, a, that's what this returns. This is actually returning that record. And then I'm giving it a second record. And so the way that this works is if this is a new column, then it would append that record. So it would make it, you know, a record would have three columns in this case. Or if it's the same, it overwrites it. So in this case, it should be turning account 60 with a space into just straight up 60. And it actually, it is doing that. The thing that I didn't understand for more minutes than I care to uh, tell you about is that this is creating a record that matches what you want, right? Look, it returns the record you want, but you're not saving this record. It's not changing var record. It's not changing these curly braces. It just returns a record. So what you have to do is so simple, but it took me so long to figure out, is you set var record to that new record. Now, if we press the button, look at that. Var record account type is 60 and it's two. Because, so this side, right, the right side here, it merged these two records into one record that had the data the way I wanted it. And then it saved that into a variable. So then now that I'm, I'm like, all right, cool, that works. Then what I did was I just changed this to say var record dot, right? Because, uh, this it can be self-referencing, so var record dot account type, and then we're just going to trim that. Remember, because we figured out that trim cuts it down. So now, if I press this, now if I oh, so let's click on this to create a, a record, and then this to do it, and then now we can be really frustrated that Power Apps is being dumb. 60, so that is not right. So let's go here. Oh wait, yeah, it worked. So here, let's go to the SEP. So that's 814. You should be showing me 814. And Power Apps is just being angry right now because I've changed too much. Oh, there you go, 814's back. And then we'll just do the land of that. All right, this is the reason sometimes I reboot Power Apps. Power Apps gets angry. So land is three for 814. Um, and so then if we do, so if we do, how about uh, Chewy Roth? That one was three and that one is six, right? So, so that's all happening. But if we now press this button, boop, now they're two. So what I would do is I took this code now that I know that it does what I want. And so then now I put that code right here. So I do this and this. So it sets far record to be this item and then it sets var record again to be this plus this. Yeah, fancy. And so then now if I press the 73, we should see our smiley face. Why don't I see my smiley face? Now right, let's go look at our code for our smiley face. Account type is 73, you are 73. I think Power Apps is still just angry with us. There's our smiley face, yay! So, um, sorry, Power Apps got angry in the middle there, that which makes the video weird, but this is what happens in the real world. This is why we get frustrated. Power Apps just stop showing me data for no reason. No big deal, right? File, save, close. Or when Power Apps freaks out like that, right? Because there's another broken one, right? This one's still broken, right? Anytime you have a control like this, it's not showing you data when it clearly should, right? It even knows. Look, it knows it should be showing me a two. It's just not. Just break it, so delete that last character, and then put it back. Doop, Power Apps is happy again. Oh, Power Apps, it's the little things that keep us going. Okay, 
But so now, hopefully that helps you guys understand how I patched my record variable because I was using it in 100 places, so I didn't want to go fix all and add trim to all the places. So I just changed this code to set it and then set it again, but by trimming off this, boom. And now if you're a super nerd, you're thinking, oh, I can do that more efficiently by blah, blah, blah. Yes, but this is what I need you to understand how it works. If you can find a more efficient way to do it, and there is, then have at it. But I wanted you to kind of understand how this works. The other thing I want you guys to understand, so right now, clearly var record just has two fields. So let's go back to this. All right, so one of the things that you can also do, this record does not have to relate. So we could be like, you know, we could make a new field. Is Shane cool? And then we could say false. And so then now when I did this and I wanted this to happen, Power Apps freaked out. Power Apps is like, whoa, I don't understand how my life is, is, is it proceeding right now? Because far record doesn't have that column, so it's confused, like this section puts two, this one puts three. So this is that great case of file, save, and then close, and then click open again, and then browse, and then there's my one. And so we come back over here now, and so if I press my fake data, that looks good. And then if I press this, that works, yay. And then if I press this one, What's important to understand now is var record has a new field called is Shane cool false. Um, but that's because remember, all this is doing is saying set var record to this, uh, whatever the output of this is. And so what the output of this was, was it said take the fields in var record, which was account type and account name, and then add another column called is Shane cool and make it false. And so it, merge those into one record and then it put that into this record. And as you're playing with this, if Power Apps freaks out on you like it just did to me, what was happening was the error checker couldn't figure out that it had two columns or three columns. Like it, it, the error checker was just overwhelmed. So anytime the error checker gets overwhelmed, that's where we do what I refer to as rebooting Power Apps, which is save, close, come back in, and Power Apps is happy. So don't, don't like pull your hair out, you know, thinking you're, you're getting it wrong. Don't be afraid to blame Power Apps by rebooting Power Apps. Yikes, I almost forgot to show you how to make the fake data. Oh, my bad. So if you hit the little button here. So all I did was I went ahead and made a collection. So I called it fake SQL view data, very fancy name. And the account name was just kind of as you expect. And then for account type, you can see I put it in quotes and then I just put all these trailing spaces inside the quotes. And so that's how they got captured. I tried to make this fake data over on SQL so I could import bad data. And for the life of me, I could not figure out how to, I could put the fake data in SQL. SQL has fake data with, with extra spaces. Power Apps kept taking them away. So how my customer is getting fake data to me, I have no idea, but they are. So I just went ahead and mocked it up this way to uh, show you guys how it worked. Then also don't forget that if you are a subscriber, you can download this app and play with it. You know, I don't know why you might want to play with it, but if you do, it's out there. So just wanted to throw that. And by subscriber, I mean training.powerapps911.com uh, subscriber, right? Don't want to get anybody confused. Okay, anyway, I just want to shove this little piece in here because I forgot all this. Oops, okay? So that's really the big takeaway from today I wanted to give you guys though, right? Is this idea of patching variables. And if you're new to Power Apps, this is just one of those plants of seed. Remember, you can do it later. But for my nerdy friends, this is a big deal. This is an important step forward for a lot of us because this is something we've needed to do, or at least I've needed to do in the past, and I just didn't take the time to figure it out. So I thought I'd share and show you guys how I figured it out and how to use it. So, and with that, I think we're done for today. Um, you know, definitely if you're still watching, go check out you know training.powerapps911.com. We've got some free classes out there. We've got a I just rewrote the uh, my big class, so it's out there. So awesome stuff. I've got a really cool um, video coming next week, I hope, on mixed reality, which is like mixed reality three levels deeper than you know a lot of the other stuff out there has been done. So I want to kind of go down that rabbit hole with you. Um, if you need anything, leave me comments. With all that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you want to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all. I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere. So check them out.
Thanks and have a great day.